All right, let's take a look at some of the questions from lesson number three. We need to uh, solve the equation. So anytime you're solving an equation, uh, especially with a quadratic, it's quadratic because there's a power two there, you, want, you might wanna move everything to one side of the equation there. So if I see that negative 30 X, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that over to the uh, left-hand side. If I bring that over to the left-hand side, I get plus 30 X. And then I have the uh, plus 34 that's hanging around. And we're gonna make that equal to zero. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna now go ahead and complete the square. So I'm gonna take this negative five and I'm gonna factor that out from the first two terms. So this will be a negative five and I get a bracket of x squared minus, and if I factor out a negative five from the 30, um, I'm gonna get a, um, a negative six x, right? So negative five times negative six gives me plus 30 x, that's fine. And then when we're completing the square, the next uh, step is we always have a plus sign and then let's leave a space and then plus the uh, 34 over here and then we'll put the equals to zero over there. Okay, so uh, after we're done that, we wanna take this middle number, which is negative six, we divide that by two. So negative six divided by two is negative three and then we square it, which gives us nine. All right, and then finally we do a uh, distribution step there. Negative five times nine is negative 45. So we need to add the 45 back in there. Okay, so uh, there we go. That's how we, uh, that's the first step of completing the square. And then let's go ahead and see if we can uh, just finish this off here. So I have a negative five there bracket. Since I have a, a negative and a plus, it's gonna be X minus three all squared. And then uh, I have my 34, I have my uh, 34 plus my uh, 45. So you might wanna go to calculator and just add that. So 34 plus 45 gives you 79. So plus 79 equals to zero. And now we're just solving for X, right? That's what solve means, solve for the X variable. If I take my uh, 79 and move it over, I get negative five bracket X minus three bracket squared equals to negative 79. And then we can divide both sides by negative five. So if I divide both sides by negative five, over here on the right hand side, I'm just gonna get positive 79 divided by five. Okay. And then if I wanna get rid of this power two there, uh, what you wanna do is you wanna square root both sides. So I'll square root that and square root that. And then I'll have X minus three on the left hand side, plus or minus the square root of 79 divided by five. And then our final step is we can take our uh, negative three here and I can move that over to the uh, other side here. So I get square root plus or minus of 79 over five and then plus three. Okay, so that's how you do that very first question there. Uh, let's move on to uh, the next one. So another question where we got to solve the equation here. Okay, so um, I see a, a negative 30 X there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the negative 30 X to the other side, but I see that my negative three X squared, this is my leading coefficient or my leading term here. So this would be negative three X squared. And then I'll bring this negative 30 X over to become positive 30 X. And then we'll have the positive 26 on the, uh, on, uh, the positive 26 that's hanging around there. Okay. So we need to set this equal to zero and uh, this whole lesson is all about completing the square here. So let's go ahead and complete the square. Let's factor out this negative three, the leading coefficient from the first two terms, which is gonna be x squared. And then this would be minus 10 x. And then this uh, plus 26 will be over there. Then we always have a plus sign and something like that. And then we gotta figure out what goes in that empty space there. Okay, well, my middle term is really negative 10. So you take your middle term, which is negative 10, and you divide that by two, which is negative five. And if you square it, you always get a positive number, which is gonna be 25, all right? And then just like the previous question, then you distribute the negative three and the 25, and that gives you a uh, negative 75. So the opposite of negative 75 is gonna be positive 75. All right, so there you go. Uh, let's go ahead and continue here. I have zero equals to negative three bracket bracket squared. Uh, since there's a, a minus and a plus, then we have a minus sign, so x minus five. And then finally, we, we have our 26 plus or 75, and feel free to, to go to a calculator to just kind of do the mental math there. So that's 26 plus 75. That's gonna be positive 101. All right, so uh, remember, we've got to solve for x here, right? So we need to get x by itself. So if I, so if I move, move the, uh, the 101, if I move this positive 101 to the other side, I get negative 101. 
equals to negative 3 bracket x minus 5 all squared. Then I can divide both sides by negative 3. And if I divide a negative number by a negative number, I get a positive number. So on the left-hand side, I get 101 divided by 3. And that's going to be positive because I have two negatives, right? And just like the previous question, if, if, if there's power 2 there, we can square root both sides. And if I square root this side, I get plus or minus the square root of 101 divided by 3 equals to uh, x minus 5. And then I can bring the minus 5 over. So I get plus or minus the square root of 101 over 3 plus 5 equals to x. Okay, that's it for uh, question number two. So this is just, just some completing the square techniques here. Uh, question number five here. Um, what I recommend with question number five here is I would just uh, go to Desmos and I would just try to uh, graph this particular problem. And uh, if you go to Desmos, um, basically the graph will look something like that. So do your best to kind of put this into Desmos and get yourself an equation there and um, see if I can just kind of get the key points there. Um, uh, let's see if I can just quickly sketch this. So what I would do here is I would just on, if, if you just kind of label your page correctly, just say uh, using Desmos, you just want to do a light, uh, very light sketch of this quadratic. And then uh, what you want to do is you definitely want to use the units here because uh, this is a ball going up into the air. And I guess uh, our units here are feet and this is in seconds. And the very first question is uh, what is the maximum height of the ball and when does it occur? So that's pretty much the vertex, right? So if I go back to my uh, graph on Desmos, my vertex is 1.2 comma 45.6. So uh, if I just go ahead and label the point here, this point right here is, um, sorry, I forgot already, it's 1.2 comma 45.6. Right, so uh, basically you would say that the max height is 1.2 and then we would say feet. And, um, oh sorry, that's wrong. The max height is not that. The max height is 45.6 feet. And when does this occur? It happens after 1.2 seconds of when the baseball is up into the air. Uh, part B is how long will the ball be in the air until it hits the ground? Okay, so it starts here. And the ball travels and then it hits the ground over here. So this is the uh, x-intercept right here, right? So we've got to find the x-intercept using Desmos. And the x-intercept is 3.587 seconds. So we'll say uh, 3.587 seconds. So that's this point right here, which is uh, 3.587 comma 0. And uh, finally, last question is, what is the height of the ball when it is as initial when it is initially struck? So that's this height right here. And that's just the y-intercept, which is uh, 34.08 feet. All right, so a lot of those answers for question number five uh, can be found just by using uh, Desmos. So uh, it's very important that you uh, sketch the graph, say that you're, you're using Desmos, and basically the answers are pretty much your vertex, the x and y-intercepts. Okay, so move on to question number six now. Solve by completing the square. Okay, so we've been doing a lot of these. So um, you, when you're completing the square, you factor out the leading coefficient, which is two from the first two terms. So this is term one, this is term two. So let's factor out the two, and I get x squared plus two x, and then plus space, and then the minus two goes there, and I'll put the equals to zero over there. And then I take my middle number, which is a positive 2. And if I divide that by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. And if you square it, you just get 1. All right. And then if you uh, distribute this last step here, 2 times 1 is 2. So I have a plus 2 over it. Sorry. Not a plus 2. It's going to be a negative 2. It's always the opposite uh, number. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and simplify this now. This will be 2 bracket bracket squared. And then let's just do the negative 2 and the negative 2, which is a negative 4 equals to zero. Since both signs here are positive, this is positive and that's positive, the middle sign is going to be positive. So this will be uh, x plus one squared minus four equals to zero. And then from here on, I find that most students are generally okay of solving this. This is just your basic algebra steps now. 
you bring the negative 4 over to get positive 4. Then you divide both sides by 2. And if you divide both sides by 2, uh, basically uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2, right? And then I would just uh, square root that and square root that. And if we do that, we get x plus 1 equals to plus or minus root 2. And then finally, you want to bring this plus 1 over. So this is x equals to plus or minus root 2 minus 1. All right, so there you go. So just another completing the square type of problem there. Okay, let's move on to another completing the square question here. So um, uh, solve by completing the square. So the leading coefficient is a 5. So let's factor out the 5 from the first two terms. So I get x squared minus 6x plus, and then a space, and then a minus 1, and then equals to 0 over there. Now, um, our middle number here is a 6. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. And if I square 3, I get 9. All right, And then 5 times 9 is 45, positive 45. So the opposite is negative 45. All right, so completing the square has a few little tricks there with uh, the opposite signs there. Okay, so the five remains. And right away, you should notice that if you have a minus and a plus, the sign here will, will be the minus sign. And just take your middle number, divide that by two, or square that, and you'll get three. So that's how you get that minus three there. And then we have a minus 46 equals to zero. Okay, and then once again, a little bit of algebra here. So uh, let's move the uh, negative 46 over to the uh, right-hand side to get positive 46. Divide both sides by 5, and we get 46 divided by 5. And then we square root both sides, right? So I square root that, square root that. We get x minus 3 equals to plus or minus the square root of 46 over 5. And then finally, you can bring the negative 3 over to get plus or minus the square root of 46 over 5, and then plus the 3. Okay, so same concept over and over again. We're just completing the square and doing some algebra at the end. All right, another completing the square problem here. We just need to move things around. Notice that I have two terms on the uh, right-hand side. So let's just bring them over to the left-hand side. Negative 7x squared. And since I have a x there, let's bring that over. So this is going to be this will be negative 14x plus 21 equals to zero. Okay, so another completing the square problem here. So our leading coefficient is negative seven. So we factor out the negative seven from the first two terms. So I get x squared plus two x, and then we always have a, a plus sign and that, and I have a plus 21 equals to zero there. Okay, that looks good. And then my middle number is a two, so I divide that by two. So two divided by two is one, and if I square one, I get a positive one. Now remember, we distribute that term with the leading coefficient, which is negative seven. So negative seven times one is negative seven, and to undo that, we have a positive seven. All right, that will make the two lines mathematically the same thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's uh, Go ahead and write this as a factor term here. So this would be x. Since there's, this is a positive and that's a positive, this would be a positive. And then 2 divided by 2 is 1, so 1, so 1 squared. And then uh, 21 plus 7 is going to be positive 28 equals to 0. Okay, uh, let's bring the positive 28 to the other side. So if I bring the positive 28 to the other side, I get negative 28. Divide both sides by negative 7. And this is what you can do in your head. Uh, 28 divided by 7 is going to be a 4. And then this is actually nice because if you square root both sides, uh, the square root of 4 we do know. But we still need the plus or minus, which is 2. And then at the end, we take this plus 1 and we bring that over, right? So x equals to plus or minus 2 and then the minus the 1. And this one, we can actually figure out the two answers here. So our first answer is going to be 2 minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. And the other answer is negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3. So those are our two answers there, right? So those are the x-intercepts of a parabola here, right? So if you were to kind of graph this parabola here, it's probably going to look like this. And what we just found here was that's the 1, and this is the negative 3 right there, right? Those are x-intercepts when we're solving this. Okay, so we move on to a few more uh, questions here. Question number 12. Okay, this is actually nice because we don't need to complete the square. Let's just bring the 27 over because I've got to find the roots. Roots are pretty much the x-intercepts, right? So um, 
Uh, we'll graph the solutions to this right after, but uh, if we go ahead and apply some basic algebra here, if I bring the 27 over, I get a negative 27. If I divide both sides by negative three, I'm gonna get a nine. And then if you uh, square root that and square root that, you get x plus five. Now the square root of nine, anytime you square root, it's always gonna be plus or minus, and then we need the three there. And then uh, how do I bring the plus five over? Well, it's plus or minus three minus five. And uh, this, one's, this one's not too bad because we can definitely get the answers here. So three minus five is gonna be negative two. And then we have our negative three minus the five, which is negative eight. All right, so those are the roots there. So if you were to kind of graph this, just to look at the graph here is an alien coefficient. So the graph probably looks like this where uh, this is going to be negative 8 and that's going to be negative 2, right? So that's those are the roots for this particular equation. Okay, that's it for the uh, homework help video for this particular lesson.